we're developing a society because of all of these different toxins known to affect brain function. We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government. How mercury causes brain neuron degeneration. These new findings reveal important visual evidence as to how mercury causes neurodegeneration. More importantly, this study provides the first direct evidence that low-level mercury exposure is indeed a precipitating factor that can initiate this neurodegenerative process within the brain. As Dr. Vera Shardna will show us, she is a retired principal research scientist who by now has studied well over 60,000 pages of orthodox medical research articles on the subject, also culminating in a book. It is a well-documented fact that the incidence and mortality from infectious diseases like measles, whooping cough, rubella, mumps, fell by 90% before any vaccine has even been introduced. This is death rate for measles between 1900 and 1960. Again, you can see steady downward trend in mortality from measles without any vaccine. There comes the vaccine here, and it was already at the tail end of uh, uh, mortality from measles. So there must have been other factors than vaccines that caused the observed fall in the mortality from infectious diseases. And what did cause the decline? Let's hear from Dr. Robin Cosford, a Sydney medical doctor, and Pauline Rose, an independent nurse practitioner. Scarlet fever, which is an infective disease caused by the streptococcal bacteria, was in existence and same sort of levels at that same time as whooping cough, measles, polio, and these other diseases. And we do not vaccinate against scarlet fever. We never have vaccinated against scarlet fever. And interestingly, the incidence of scarlet fever has dropped off, paralleling the drop in whooping cough and polio and so on. So it would appear, when we actually consider these other factors as well, that it's not the vaccines that have reduced the incidence of these diseases, but other things that were going on in society at the time. There were, there were basic public health measures and sanitation measures, and these seem to be the things that have made the major impact. Dr. Archie Kalakarinos is a medical doctor and author, well known for his success with vitamin C in his work with Aboriginal children. There is a big epidemic of smallpox in the Philippines, and this was a very important epidemic in many ways because statistics were kept for the first time. And it was clearly demonstrated that the only people who got smallpox twice were the vaccinated and that there are far more cases of smallpox amongst the vaccinated than amongst the non-vaccinated. And these statistics are available if people want to see them. Now I think these are the most glaring examples of how people are being misled. Hi, I'm Ed McCabe, Mr. Oxygen author of the book, Flood Your Body with Oxygen. 2.1 million Americans became seriously ill every year because of toxic reactions to correctly prescribed medicines taken properly. 106,000 die. One in 15 U.S. hospital patients can expect to suffer from a serious reaction to prescription or over-the-counter medicine, and 5% will die from it. That was the Washington Post quoting the Journal of the American Medical Association. What about our standard treatments? Well, most cancer patients die from chemotherapy. Quote, chemotherapy does not eliminate breast, colon, or lung cancers. This fact has been documented for over a decade, yet doctors still use chemotherapy for these tumors. Alan Levin, MD, University of California, San Francisco, The Healing of Cancer, Marcus Books, 1990. 40% of those that go into bankruptcy are forced there by the industry that's the richest industry in the world. And this richest industry in the world controls the politicians, the agencies, the doctors, and the treatment modalities. So that we only use their things. This is what they would like to see. There are two oxy-truths. Two oxy-truths. The first big one is that the ultimate cause of all disease are toxins. The ultimate cause of all disease is toxins. And yet I just read you that the pollution is in the groundwater, it's in the air, it's in the food, it's in the additives, it's in the colorings, the flavorings, the extenders, 
all this stuff. It's in you. It's in me because I live on this planet. So the second big oxy truth is that the majority of diseases are anaerobic. They're caused by primitive life forms. And anaerobes can't live in active forms of oxygen. That's what this teaching is all about. Anaerobes can't live in oxygen. They live in dark, wet, damp, dirty places like a body filled with pollution. But when you put a lot of oxygen in there in the active form, they all die. Just like that. Now the normal healthy immune cells that we have in our body love oxygen. Every cell in your body has to have oxygen to live. Solutions. I've gone around the world and what I've done is I've interviewed thousands and thousands of people, hundreds and hundreds of doctors and said, what worked? Number one thing over and over and over was oxygen, 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 oxygen. Worked faster, quicker and safer on more people than any other therapy on this planet. Anything, bar none. And yet, it's not taught in American medical schools. Do you think politics and money have anything to do with that? Ozone. Ozone is the key. Ozone is the best of the best of the best. And what do I mean by that? Is I have seen more people healed more rapidly of more things than you can imagine through the use of ozone supplementation or clinical application of it. Some doctor's office somewhere, either in this country or outside of it. It's the best of the best. What is ozone? Ozone is simply O3. Pure medical grade O1 plus another one plus another one gives you O3. Much more active, much more powerful than plain old stable O2. The breathing levels of ozone. Well, ozone is blatantly non-toxic. Blatantly non-toxic. Ozone is. You can come over to my house when I'm working. I have an ozone generator sitting there cranking out all kinds of ozone into the air because I live near a freeway and I want to have the cleanest air possible in my home. So the smarter thing to do is if you get one of these things, you start out at a very low level and you very gradually turn it up. Very, very gradually turn it up because that's allowing your body and your family's bodies to acclimate to it. And you'll find that they have no problem at all breathing, just like I don't, with a high level of ozone in the air. Is it safe? Well, how about this one study they did in Germany? It was published in the Forensic Acts of Germany University of Innsbruck, 5,579,238 treatments were examined. Of those were 384,775 patients. So it's a study, it's a study with 384,775 patients. This is the comprehensive study. Side effect rate of 384,775 patients getting 5,579,238 ozone treatments, injections, 0 0.000005. It's the safest medical, health, natural treatment in the world is putting these active forms of oxygen into your body because there are no side effects. It's not like drugs with this big list of side effects that come in the bottle. All your body does is flush stuff out. You may start with a little diarrhea, you may get, you know, your nose may run normal, normal cleansing reactions. Your body's got to remove the waste. There are more than 3,000 medical references in the German, Russian, Italian, and Cuban literature, probably more like 10 or 12,000 if we start reading some of these foreign languages, especially German, showing ozone's use throughout 50 years of application to humans by way of millions of dosages. The International Ozone Association and the ozone machine manufacturers report more than 7,000 MDs in Europe using medical ozone safely and effectively, and some have been doing this for more than 40 years. Here's seven good ozone clinical references. Just quickly, Medline, for example. Here's a, an older version. It's only got 283 medical ozone therapies, scientific rep references, and this is on the PubMed or Medline US government site. About 30 of these are double-blind clinical studies, which everyone always says, wow, if you show me a double-blind study, I'll listen to you. Well, there's 30 of them on the government site showing that ozone therapy has been used around the world very successfully. In 1980, Washington University School of Medicine, St. Louis, published in Science, the US peer-reviewed scientific journal, Ozone Selectively Inhibits Human Cancer Cell Growth. Now, why would ozone stop cancer? 
And if you look at the other clinical references about ozone use in cancer, they always usually say in a dose-dependent manner. In other words, the more you give them, the more ozone oxygen you give them, the quicker the cancer cells die or are prevented from growing. So if you were to put enough oxygen back in, would you have a problem where a cell doesn't have enough oxygen, gets burnt and can't use oxygen anymore, and then starts fermenting sugar, which makes it create lactic acid? And the lactic acid goes out and burns the cells next to us. This is how cancer spreads. The cells next to the cancer cell become cancerous because of the lack of oxygen and the increased acid. And if you were to clean that out, if you were to flood your body with oxygen, what would happen to those cancer cells? Ozone inhibits cancer 40 to 60 percent and up to 90 percent. 1983, doctors from all over the world using ozone came together in Washington, D.C and announced to the world that ozone removes viruses and bacteria from blood, human, and stored. It's successfully used on AIDS, herpes, hepatitis, mononucleosis, cirrhosis of the liver, gangrene, cardiovascular disease, arteriosclerosis, high cholesterol, cancerous tumors, lymphomas, leukemia, highly effective on rheumatoid and other arthritis, allergies of all types, improves multiple sclerosis, ameliorates Alzheimer's disease, senility, and Parkinson's. Effective on proctitis, colitis, prostate, candidiasis, trichomonasis, cystitis, and externally, ozone is effective in treating acne, burns, leg ulcers, open sores and wounds, eczema, and fungus. Have I missed your disease? These are doctors, 10, 20, 30 years in their clinics, commonly successfully treating these diseases with ozone, telling the world in 1983, did anybody do anything about it? No. Why? Because there's no big corporation money behind it, telling you every night in the news programs, paying the news department to not do the, do the stories on these natural healing methods. It's, it's just absolutely incredible what they're doing in Russia. This is a picture of a medical ozone hospital in Russia. The Russians have more medical savvy than the U.S. We have an oxygen gap Remember the old missile gap? Well, we have an oxygen gap with the Russians. There's 1,300 medical ozone machines that have been produced in Russia. There's 1,950 ozone MDs, 1,300 ozone nurses, 1,100 medical organizations using ozone. 660 of them are the large state, regional, or city hospitals that have departments for ozone therapy. 440 of them are private clinics or surgeries or medical centers that specialize only in ozone therapy or provide ozone treatments. 40 are state medical institutes, the Russian government state medical hospital system. Universities, universities and acad academies teach ozone therapy to doctors. We don't teach ozone therapy to our doctors because the curriculum is controlled by the salespeople for the drug companies. Then we get into the politics. In Australia, for example, they tried to do a test in ozone. They went to the Philippines with some AIDS patients. They started getting them really well. They were giving them the recirculatory hemoperfusion, and they were starting to get well. One guy's Kaposi's sarcoma was falling off him. Somebody else uh, was able to go out and climb mountains when they came in in a wheelchair. And what happened? Well, somebody f from somewhere called up the head of the chief of police in there in the Philippines and said, go raid these people. They're got a quack clinic. And so they busted the doors open, came in with machine guns and shut the clinic down before it could produce the results. And that's the hallmark of whenever you see the same thing in Pennsylvania, that happened once at a hospital there. They got excellent results, but they got pressure from other department heads, from the hospital administrators and other people that were told that they've been threatened with a loss of grants in all other areas if they came out with a study showing that ozone was effective. So these are the politics we're dealing with. There's an entrenched bureaucracy, extremely afraid that anything is going to come along that's better than what they've got, cheaper, more effective, and have no side effects. And of course, we're talking about ozone. Have I proved my case? Have I, have I made you understand? Have I gotten you to get what I'm saying? I hope I have. Our world needs more help. Our world needs you to do something about this, not just... So many people come, they're sick, they grab it, they run away. Well, I'm better now, and they do nothing. Others come, they see how it helps them, they go, my God, I've got to tell everybody. You be one of those people.